Hello everybody, my name is VSDA100 and welcome to my vlogging channel, or my vlogging series rather, where I talk about gaming news, uh, anime topics, films, and what's going on in the industry in general. I do apologise for the sound, it is pretty poor and it seems to be so inconsistent with the fact that one video I'm really good with the sound and it's loud and clear, and this, and I don't know why, but it, I've been testing it every which way and it seems to be inconsistent, I don't know. So uh, I'm just going to have to power through it. I am trying to get that sorted, but that's, you know, another topic for another day. Uh, as at this point, uh, this uh, the name of the video is uh, Kojima basically parts ways with Konami. Now we've seen this happening over a period of, of months, uh, uh, so on long ongoing scenario here, and you know things keep coming out, and it's secrecy of left, right, and center. You don't know who or what to believe. At the same time, as a Metal Gear Solid fan, you believe that Kojima, you know, uh, doing his job, doing it right, and rightly so. You're a fan of him, uh, you know. Well, I am anyway, and you know. We know what he's capable of. Anyway, this relates to uh, specifically an article that got released. It wasn't Jap Japanese. No, I do not have the link in the description below, unfortunately, because I do not speak Japanese. And uh, if you're watching this, I highly doubt that you do too. But whatever. This is anyway, I haven't had my say on any of this. Um, maybe a few tweets here and there. But uh, my perspective. But uh, it came to light when this, this, this uh, story broke um, about this article. So I thought I'd do a vlog on it and get my uh, opinion out there. And we'll have a bit of discussion about it. Um... So yeah, the news broke that uh, it translates this article that they spent $80 million on uh, Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain. Now considering for most part uh, that most games, uh, like this is nothing, this has changed to most games, you know, or developers like EA and God knows what, you know, uh, Destiny for being one example, spending $500 million on it. But anyway, moving on for that, on for that, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Now, the fact, okay, so he spent eighty million dollars on a game that's being made, and maybe that's why uh, that's they're so pissy at him. Um, you know, this is being a factor of him departing. Well, that's one, but the second one is, or their biggest problem that they have with it is the fact that um, the main factor is the project was delayed. Now, you got to understand, if you're a big company uh, or any company, but especially a big company, but there are always going to be glitches and delays. Now, don't get me wrong, with the amount of money you put into it, any game. Is you feel you should always you know uh, be you know fix it quite quickly, uh, but and everyone has a deadline. We understand that. Um, but for the most part, it's a very ambitious title, considering the fact that uh, it's an open world. You got the multiplayer aspect of it. It's a very complex story. The graphics look great and everything else. Sixty frames per second. PC port. You know, I think it's on two consoles this time as well. The Xbox One as well as the PS4. And you know, you look at other games in, in Remnants, it's like the, the, the Division, like, oh my god, how long has that been taken to come out? It still ain't out, but Remnants will be coming out. Um, you know, Watch Dogs uh, was, w w like, how great that looked on the demo, and then it came out, and then it was nowhere near, as, as it were. And then, um, I felt personally found that game boring as hell, but there you go. So, all these big games coming out, you expect a few delays, uh, it is very ambitious. But whatever, for the most part, these uh, they put $80 million into it, plus it's taken time, they were getting frustrated. They, they want a return on an investment, etc., etc. Okay, so moving on from that, um, now apparently, this, this, but it's a little bit deeper now, apparently it goes back into uh, 2010, all the way back to 2010, I should say, when uh, Konomi uh, was interested in low-cost uh, games, making low-cost games and selling them for a uh, profit, compared to the console games market. Now, we saw this recently with a bit of a backlash, with fans, including myself, when they announced, I believe they were going to go for mobile games, which really scared the hell out of me. I don't like, like well, a lot of us, were like, come on, we don't want to see mobile games. Get your ass back on the Metal Gear and consoles and PC. We know what you're capable of. We know what you can deliver. Why are you even bothering with this mobile crap? Uh, but then they came out, and I think they made a statement, basically saying that we're touching base on it, but don't worry, we, you're you're still um, going to get all your AAA games, as it were. And I think the rest of the world um, kind of uh, blew uh, well, like a sigh of relief. Now, this goes on to a little bit of odd culture into the employees of uh, Konami. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about what I'm going to end up talking about here, whether it's Kojima and them parting ways or K Konami, you know, doing some weird shit uh, with their employees. So, for example, a lot of their employees are not given email addresses. They don't have email addresses for the company. So, I suppose, in theory... Uh, you know, I mean, 
it, it's very, very odd. I mean, so you ain't got a, a, an email for your company. How are you supposed to stay in contact with each other? Snappity snack, you know what I mean? Um, and those that do, apparently, uh, their emails get randomized every few months. So I, I don't know really what that means. I mean, is there like a set amount of email addresses and every few months they change around? So instead of contacting this person, you're contacting this person instead. That's fucking stupid. Uh, I have no idea what any company or in the world that actually operates like that. It doesn't make logical sense to me. Uh, you want things efficient, quick, fast paced. Um, I mean, what, are they scared about leaking stuff? I mean, I don't, I don't really understand that. Uh, I, I'm a little bit confused at that. I mean, why, why change them every few months? That's just mass confusion on everyone's part. Apparently, um, obviously, with that said, uh, the team or the uh, everyone's morale at the workplace is very, very low. And by the sounds of it, fuck yeah, I'll be pretty fucking annoyed at that shit. But it gets worse. This is what I don't understand. Um, every Now, the staff members, right, who are deemed, and get this, the article goes on to state, it's just an article, I don't know where it's from specifically, but it states that those that are deemed at the company are, are deemed useless, <laughs> yes, useless, actually, come on, are reassigned to other jobs, such as assembly lines to their slot uh, machine factory, and even working as security guard. What? Well, if you're working at Konomi and you have a certain, if you're a programmer or, or whatever, uh, or director, why the hell are you being pushed around doing jobs mediocre crap to do with their that you know you, you sign up for one thing getting a job a respectable job doing this that and the other and then all of a sudden you're pushed down to to, to, to factory work that doesn't make a lot of sense to me who operates that way um, uh, I mean we, even as a discipline me measure I mean I mean you're talking about experienced people here this is what this is, it goes on further to say but it's and even cleaning up the company fitness clubs and it's not even going on to just junior people. This is this is senior people as well. This is crazy. What you know? What the hell? How can you run a company that way? Of course, morale is going to be low. You you don't want to be you know being a senior manager or producer. Sorry, specifically producer they mentioned. And then all of a sudden you're doing fucking security guard work. What kind of logical sense does that make? Uh, anyway, reached out for comment from these people. And they have yet to comment. I don't know what's going on with that company. It's very peculiar and the way they're operating and why, I mean, look, even if they operate that way to begin with, it's all coming out now of, you know, it doesn't make logical sense. No wonder their, their company is, you know, rumored to be going bankrupt and I believe they even stopped trading on the stock market recently as well. Uh, that can't, see, again, I don't know what, what I'm talking about here. Jima uh, leaving them or Kenobi just being fucking odd. Anyway, getting back to uh, Kojima. Uh, specifically, because that's what I'm, everyone's mostly interested in, let's face it. Um, now, $80 million to spend on the game. Now, as I said before, touching back on that, um, you know, uh, considering looking at Destiny and other franchises spending hundreds of millions, you know, they took risks and they gained back, okay, through advertising, but that's Destiny and everything, and, and I won't get into that. Uh, but and they got their money back, and that was a, a risk taker, and they, they got lucky, whatever. They fooled us all. That's all I'm going to say about that. Hey, that's just my opinion. Anyway, but Kojima, it, it, you know, is, is a golden goose, as it were. He, you know, anything he does, he does well. And uh, he's proven. So to sack him or to part ways with him on any of delays, which is a developer you know is going to happen in, in an industry anyway, uh, you know, that you're going to get all the money back. It's only, what, one, or two, one month till September. And uh, all that money is going to come flooding back in all day, every day. It's a safe bet. If I'm a games company and I have Kojima and he's making a game, I know that that's a safe bet. I know in my heart of hearts that that is a solid fucking, you know, guarantee of money, a money flow. Um, in not only the quality of his work and what he does, you know what you're going to get. Or whatever he does, I, I'm interested to see what he does and, and I, I have no doubt it will be successful. So the idea of you parting ways over that, some... some like an excuse of a load of bullshit. I, I don't believe. I think it's just straight up bullshit and they use it as an excuse to get rid of him. Um, but as I said, I think that company's going to be a bit fucking wacky as far as I can tell. Um, but having said that, as a Metal, now, as a Metal Gear Solid fan, and, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've played, and I didn't play the first one, I won't lie, I've got it here, Peace Walker, but, uh, I mean, look, I've got, you know, the HD collection. I bought them all on PS2 back in the day as well. Um, you know, Metal Gear Solid 4, um, 
Rise and Revengeance, whatever the fucking catastrophe that was, was renaming it, I don't know. And of course, we have Ground Zero. Now, I will be buying Phantom Pain as well. It is one of a few games that are coming out that I have no, I'm very comfortable to say day one pick up. Don't have to wait for a fucking review. It is open world, it is multiplayer based. Now, I, sh I should go into a hell of a lot more detail, but having said that, I haven't, um, they've been flooding everything, with, like the news with that update after update after update, and I didn't want to kill the excitement of the game where I knew everything about the game. I want to sit back and enjoy the ride and, you know, not overload myself with all this information. So, I apologise on my part for the lack of in mass information that I could have based on that, but I've only done it through me being a fan of not wanting to spoil the game. Um, but yeah, so I think it personally, this is a worry, this is where it really gets interesting because now, as a fan of Metal Gear Solid, I'm thinking, fuck Konomi or whatever, come on Kojima, go make your own company, uh, do, do whatever and we will follow you, that's great, fa la la. Well yeah, original, off the top of my head, that, uh, that was straight away my opinion, fuck him, we follow Kojima anywhere he goes and we we buy his games and we check out what he's doing, we don't give a shit who the publisher is or the or what have you, if it's EA or whatever, he can jump to any company and with that Metal Gear franchise license and you know, you, they, they provide the backing, the cash and he gets free f full flow of creativity or this, that's what we're hoping. However, pretty much that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, they have the license, I don't know for how long, but long story short, they own the fucking license and he's screwed. He cannot work on another game of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, he has to do something else, which is a killer for, for Metal Gear Solid fans, because now we're all going on Nomi, Gnomi or whatever. Uh, you know, waiting for them, are they going to crash and burn? Uh, do we, are they going to make it like a, a mass franchise where they knock out any old shit and, and just put the, slap the Metal Gear Solid franchise on it? I don't know, it hasn't gone that far thus far. Um, but I have my doubts that it will last that long, I don't know, I'm kind of worried about that. I'm already pissed off the fact that David Hater ain't playing the snake. But I've had to get over that and, you know, trusting Kojima uh, to do right by, by it. Um, I am going to pick up the game, obviously, to see what they got, to see what it brings. It is the last game he is going to be working on in terms of Metal Gear Solid franchise, I believe. Uh, I don't think anything's going to change there. I think the damage is too far gone, considering the fact that over 28 years, you'd think he'd have a, a bit more weight in the company and at least give him some, some slack, you know what I mean? $80 million is nothing uh, compared to what they're going to gain from his game. Like I said, he's a... He's a star star player in this world of gaming, and he is a he is such a a, a name brand that he has. I mean, it's very rare. Well, in my opinion, that you follow directors. You only follow games companies, yes, and they do good work. But you're following a, a specific man doing you know a, a creative uh, type in the industry. Uh, just one man, and, and trusting on his direction and stories and you know the complex story of Metal Gear Solid. But. Um, yeah, so it's it's very kind of worrying times for the for the Metal Gear Solid franchise. We enjoy the, this Phantom Pain, but I don't know what we're gonna have um, uh, that comes next for this uh, franchise. I am looking forward to it. Uh, and what is Kojima gonna do next? I don't know. I hope he comes. I mean, they, they even went as, as far and bitchy as to remove his um, his logos, uh, Kojima Productions, off of the Phantom Pain box, which I think is so fucking petty and shitty. Because uh, the fact that if it weren't for him. This game wouldn't be out, you know, this game, or well, well, in terms of, you know, like, alright, they put in the money, but at the same time, the success of this game is all down to his direction. You know, uh, you, can, you can invest as much money as you want into a game, but if you haven't got the direction or, or what have you, it, you know, it could turn out nowhere near as good as what it is going to be. At least that's my opinion. So I'm going to be following Kojima uh, like the millions of fans. Uh, around the world anyway, regardless of where he, you know, I'll keep an eye on Kojima, uh, Konami a little bit, but at the same time I ain't really interested in what they have other than the Metal Gear franchise anyway. Um, anyway, uh, I do want to uh, go on to a shout out to a group, uh, I haven't been told to do this, I'm just, I, I really do like the group, I think it's a great group, uh, Metal Gear Solid Outer Haven, I think it's Outer Haven, Outer Haven, Outer Haven. Uh, with over 16,000 members, I am going to post this video in this group. I'll probably get a lot of shit for it as well, I don't know. Um, but it's a great group. I really have enjoying it. I mean, these people talk about nothing but Metal Gear every single day. It seems to be most part positive, you know, discussing, debating, asking questions, you know, uh, it, and some great pictures and stuff, you know, uh, content in there. Um, it's really a great group, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I am going to put their description in the link uh, below. 
I hope most of them, well, ideally <laughs> all 16,000, uh, you know, comment, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm praying. But anyway, but um, to close this video off, anyway, uh, I do want to, I, I will say that I am also on Twitter at the SDA100. I'll put that link in the description below and Facebook, my Facebook group. I will put the Metal Gear Solid Out Haven. Um, uh, group also if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan you should join that group everyone has uh, social media such as Twitter and Facebook I know we're on Twitter but I'll put the Facebook group specifically because it is a, a good group and, you know, and it's already I think it's nearly close to 17,000 so kudos to them on that group uh, I do want to um, uh, put down I want to ask now normally I do a question of the day in these videos but I am going to say something a little bit different for the um, uh, for this video um, if I can just find it, good God, I can't even find it. Hold on. All right, yeah. So, to, so this video, I want you to put, if you can, remember what are your favorite um, Metal Gear Solid quotes. Doesn't matter what Metal Gear game. Uh, just putting your favorite uh, quotes in the comment section below on YouTube, please. It helps me out a lot. Uh, my favorite, personal favorite, is he who controls the battlefield controls history. That's on Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, as I said uh, before, uh, please um, like, share, comment, and subscribe to this video. I know it was a bit long. And please check out my other gaming, uh, my other content, uh, uh, other subjects, opinions. Um, and uh, I hope you uh, get involved. Thanks for watching.